Hello! Today we're going to look at the fantasy art techniques of Tim Hildebrandt. It is edited by Jackie Norton with the foreword by Boris Vallejo, which is one of my favorite artists, and afterward by Alan Dean Foster. And this is my cat Zuzu, who is insisting to be a part of this. I've tried to start this several times now without her, but she is just insistent. So we will try to get through this, and hopefully she will bore at some point of looking at fantasy art. And I do love Tim Hildebrandt, too. It's not just that I like Boris Vallejo and so on. All right, so Kitty, we want to start turning pages now. So come over this way. Come on. Off the book. Here we go. All right. <laughs> no, no. Back off the book. All right. Fantasy art. Tim Hildebrandt. So the sections are Influence and Resources, Concept and Composition, Black and White, Paintings and Colors, Presentation. So we got a bit of forward saying he's an amazing artist. All right, let me try to do this without getting my shadow on it. So you can see the style of art he does in both fantasy and science fiction. It's very iconic, very well done. Lord of the Rings, I love Lord of the Rings. Um, a great sense of proportion, kitty. <laughs> Come on, sweetie. There we go. Um, I love the details, the way that your eye gets drawn down to the main characters. I dislike in art books when they do this. I don't like because here we are, the earth is right in the middle and we've lost the earth down deep into the thing and we have to actually break the spine to be able to see this in its full uh, work. And even with this one, you know, at least they didn't do it right through the middle of the mouse. But still, there's some nice details in there of the window and the chair, and they are being lost unless, like I said, we snap the spine and push that completely flat, which in general I'm unwilling to do. So I wish they had put it just on one side, even if they rotated it sideways, so we got a view that was as big as possible without damaging the art. But his art is really, really pretty, and you can see a lot of the detail there in the mouse and in the doorway. I just love this art. These are much better. You know, single page, you get to see the details of the creature, the details of the unicorn. I love the use of light in there. So we got some black and white images in here. I don't like it when, there's no reason to do it that tiny. There's plenty of space in here to do a larger image up there and then the description down here. So I don't like it when they deliberately make it small for no reason when they had space to use. Some nice castles. Elven Fortress. Tolkien calendar. And the little details of the little knobs of wood and so on. The way that the light's hitting it and the shadow. Just beautiful. I'll try to keep my fingers off of the art. Some sketches so you get a sense of how he began. The detail on the faces is just lovely. And the dragon, you get a sense that it could actually fly. And then, you know, some of these are a less realistic style, we'll say, more uh, pop art kind of postery feel, while other ones have a quite realistic feel to them. So he does architecture well, another Tolkien. Science fiction robot-y kinds of things. Some fantasy characters. So he worked with quite a lot of authors to do book covers for them. Also, uh, it's from Dragon Riders of Pern Calendar, so he did a lot of calendars. It's a shame people don't collect calendars more <laughs> because there's some amazing art that was put out one year for a calendar and then it sort of gets lost to the world after that. At least a book, you know, you still find them on Amazon and can still appreciate the art. But the inner pages of calendars, like this one's from a calendar, um, if you don't get that calendar for that one year, you might never see that piece of art. So in that case, you know, having an art book like this is nice to be able to see those and maybe encourage you to go out and see if you can track down that calendar. But since calendars were things which were actively used and then often discarded, uh, they become far more rare than, say, a book, when books tend to be saved and stored and resold and so on. 
So I love the details on the edge and, and just the perspective is so nice there. It's uh, quite inspiring to study some of these and to get ideas for your own artwork, or if you're not an artist, just to appreciate the uh, talent that went into creating these. So more black and white types of images. And I suppose compared with a number of other fantasy artists, he tended to draw much more clothed characters, which depending on your point of view was a good or less good thing. I tend to appreciate it because I love the look of fabric and folds and I really appreciate it when an artist is good with that. Are you coming back again, Kitty? <laughs> I know you are so sweet. Here, what if I sit down? Is it because I was standing up? Is standing up to lure you over more? I'll sit. And again, the way that the streaks of light come through, it's just so lovely. So different kinds of combinations of fantasy and science fiction. I love pictures like this that have a person and a dragon together and the different, like again, the different folds and textures of the, the surfaces. Dragon Riders of Pern Calendar. I'm partial to dragons, which is <laughs> why I love this book. And again, you know, just I love the drape of the fold. He is so good at that. And, you know, the faces and the hands and other things, which uh, many different artists are good at. But he is just uh, so beautiful. This is Rapunzel and her hair. <laughs> that little triceratops with his ears. He just comes up with these delightful images. Classic sword pose. Santa Claus. A werewolf. And the Sphinx always knows. <laughs> we got Romeo and Juliet. I think there's no reason to have it going across the binding like that. You could have it on one page, even sideways, however you wanted to do it. So I just wish they wouldn't do that and damage the art. The Children of Arabelle. And the Sea Nymph Slayer. I love mermaids and the way the tail shimmers and curves is just very nice. Yeah, fighting the dragon. This is supposed to be Eowyn and the Nazgul, I think. <laughs> My idea of what a Nazgul looks like is a little different. This looks a bit like a, um, a flying... Jeez. <laughs> Drawing a blank on what these things are called. Paradactyl. <laughs> Flying dinosaur. <laughs> so, but in any case, you know, he's allowed to have his view of what a Nazgul flying creatures look like. A few little more modern kinds of things, and that's it. So, a great collection of artwork from uh, different styles wonderful to study whether you're an artist or just an art lover either way tim hildebrandt the fancy art technique so i would definitely uh, get a copy of this or see if your library has it and take a look through but uh, if you have a copy yourself it, it serves as a wonderful reference and it's uh, got all sorts of pieces of art that you might not be able to find anywhere else so uh, i appreciate this a lot